A very warm welcome to the Community Health Project Healthier Together. This is week four out of six. My name is Christian Page. I'm a registered nutritionist and certified health coach. And this project is actually here to help you with your health and your nutrition during those unusual restrictive times. And what we want is to help you to rediscover your zest for life if you've lost it. So a quick reminder of the objective. So um, we want to help you to improve your health at home, have you feel more energetic, feeling good, maybe lose a few pounds as well if you want. And all the information is contained in bite-sized practical videos that are no longer than 15 minutes each week. This is week four, but you might just want to catch up on week one on snacking, week two on veggies, and week three on breakfast as well. So the topic for this week, week four, is all about balancing your plate and balancing your energy by using easy to assemble family meals. As usual, we're going to have three different sections. The first one is eat for health, so what we mean by balance. Next section, habits for health, so tips to assemble nutrient-rich uh, meals that are simple, tasty, and actually do not need any recipe. However, in the cook for health section, I'm going to provide you with two delicious family-friendly assembly recipes for you to try. So this week we are focusing on how to put together a balanced plate meal and how this supports good energy and general well-being. We know that everything should be eaten in moderation, but we probably need to have a clearer definition around what that means and uh, what is a balanced plate actually. So there are many different ways to represent the balanced plate, but we like this picture because it's showing real food. Um, if you search on Google, you will find actually tons of different ways to uh, have a balanced plate. But this picture is actually a really good representation of the proportion we are aiming for. And I will say more about that on how we can achieve actually this in a very practical and simple way without measuring or weighing anything because we are time for doing that. So you will be really familiar with this graph now. Um, which is the blood sugar roller coaster graph. We know that there's several techniques that can help to maintain steady blood sugar levels. So we know about the different choices of snacks, different choices of breakfast, but we know that also balancing our plate can flatten the curve. So what you want is to aim for the green line and not the orange one where you just have a spike in your blood sugar, but a huge crash as well that will just make you feel really lethargic and tight. So the goal is to flatten the curve. And we know that eating balanced meal actually that include really good quality macronutrients so that you put in your fats and your carbohydrates can ensure that you have a steady supply of the nutrients that you need to keep your energy levels up. So this curve reminds you of the importance of balance. And to achieve this balance, we need to understand something about portion sizes as well. Um, but don't worry, it's not a lecture about weighing of calories or anything. It's about practical ways of managing amount of the different categories of food that you eat in a meal. But first, let's have a look at the size of our plates. So you may be surprised to learn that the size of our dinner plates um, have actually increased significantly over the last 20 to 30 years. And currently our dinner plates are generally between 11 inches and 12 inches, but they used to be only seven to nine inches. And in the US, uh, they are much, much bigger. They are about 13 inches, which is very large. Um, so I know that you are all now going to get your measuring tapes out and measure your plates. Uh, we suggest that the dining plates are no more than 11 inches. And actually using a smaller plate is reported to leave you feeling more satisfied even if food quantity is the same. So it's a bit of a um, visual illusion that tricks your brain and helps um, to make you feel fuller or uh, much sooner. So let's have a look at this optical illusion and proportion distortion. So the black circle on the right looks much bigger, but in fact, they're both the same. So if you have the same amount of food on a smaller plate or bigger plate, your brain is going to actually be tricked into feeling fuller sooner. So just think about that when um, when you're just making your plate. Maybe you want just to have a dinner plate and you will feel more satisfied. Um, and this is another a great representation of the balanced plate. It's very simple and um, it's um, very visual as well. 
So it's a really helpful guideline around the portions to balance your plate. So about a quarter should be protein uh, food. So that's your fish, seafood, eggs, dairy, poultry, meat, nuts, seeds, lentils, beans, chickpeas, and tofu, for instance. Quarter should be uh, starchy carbohydrates. So that's your root vegetables, such as uh, potatoes, parsnips, carrots, butternut, but also your grain. So your pasta, rice, millet, and quinoa. And uh, half of your plate is non starchy vegetables and sal uh, salad vegetables. So uh, lots of uh, variety of color as well. And as you can see, the guidelines are really simple. So fill half your plate with non starchy vegetables, quarter with protein, another quarter with starchy uh, carbs. So this is a visual and approximate measure, which can work really well. But when you just do uh, dishes such as stews, soups, and casserole, it um, can be really difficult to visually assess the ratio on the plates, but we can just have a guess. Um, so the balanced portion actually make a really good starting place, but uh, you can uh, also adjust them to your lifestyle. So for instance, um, if you have um, days with really intense exercise, you might need a bit more fuel. So you would increase your um, um, carbohydrate rich foods. On the other days that uh, you are happy to leave that um, on the plate, you can just leave completely this uh, portion out and fill it in with some veggies. So that's, um, so your vegetable portion instead of being half would be about three quarters of your plate. And here are some of the common starchy carbs to substitutes that many people enjoy. So they look like carbs, but they are not as starchy. And they, again, they treat the brain. And they are really satisfying and delicious. So you could have cauliflower rice instead of having normal rice or couscous. Uh, mashed cauliflower, butternut, butternut, bit, butternut butter bean, um, or celeriac instead of mashed potato, or actually a combination of those, or even half mashed potatoes and mashed um, cauliflower. Uh, roast butternut is a great alternative as well um, for roast potato or even sweet potato would be great. Cogetti or the spiralized veggies instead of spaghetti or again go half half. Sliced aubergines uh, instead of your lasagna or again you can go half half. Uh, large mushrooms such as portable Portobello mushroom is a great when it's grilled or roasted to use as an open base for a homemade burger, for instance, instead of your bread rolls. And uh, large lettuce leaves uh, for wraps. So you can be really creative here and come up with other ideas that you like. So hand portion, this is another alternative approach for estimating the relative amounts of each micronutrient. So that's your large categories. And uh, that's done by using your own hands. So this works actually really well because it takes into account people with different sizes. So generally, a six foot man will have larger hands than a five foot woman. So this guideline suggests that a protein portion is about the size of the palm of your hand and that the starchy carbohydrate portion is the size of your fist. Um, then you have two handful of um, non-starchy veggies and just a thumb of fat. So that's your butter, olive oil, or coconut oil, for instance. But let's have a look at um, each of those components of the balance plate and where you can find them. So animal protein. So proteins are the building blocks of your body. And you can have uh, animal protein, or you can have veg uh, vegetarian or vegan proteins. But let's start with the animal protein. So you could have, for instance, dairy, cheese, butter, milk, and yogurt, um, your eggs, meat, poultry, and fish. Your vegetarian or vegan protein include tofu, nuts and seeds, and also some um, lentils and beans. So that's your legumes and pulses. Um, and they are great, actually, for instance, chickpeas, black beans, kidney beans, lentils, dried or can. You can just use any of those as a source of protein. So good quality fats are also really important for lots of processes in the body and they're making you hormones and they're great for healthy skin. So different kind of oils. So for instance, sesame oil, almond oil or walnut oil. 
olive oil, which is fantastic on salads, oily fish, uh, which provides uh, omega-3 and omega-6, coconut oil, which is saturated fat, and avocado, which is a monounsaturated fat as well, is a great source of fat. So let's have a look at the starchy carbs. So for balanced energy, generally just try to choose whole grains over the white refined carbohydrates. So um, the starchy carbs would be, for instance, you new potatoes or your potatoes, your breads, um, your grains, different grains, the pasta, the rice, and other um, root vegetables such as sweet, uh, sweet potatoes. So that would make about a quarter of your plate. So non-starchy uh, vegetables now, so it's uh, lots of different uh, uh, salad veggies, then you have your um, courgettes, your butternut, your aubergines, uh, I think that's supposed to be representing a portobello mushroom with some tomatoes on it as well. So lots of lovely colors and different options there as well. So. I refer you to week two on veggies and eating the rainbow uh, if you want to know more about um, why we should just eat a, a wide variety of vegetables. So five reasons to eat balanced plate meals. So let's have a look at um, why it's a good idea to uh, include um, balanced plate meal and why it's beneficial. So it supports stable energy levels, so prevents actually your energy dips. Uh, it ensures that the meals are nutrient rich, especially uh, when we include those rainbow foods. Lots and lots of fiber that is going to keep you fuller for longer. And encourage you to eat a wider variety of food and also uh, the balanced plate helps with uh, weight management. So let's have a look at balanced meal ideas, uh, which include those, malnutri those macronutrients, so the protein, the fats, the carbohydrates, and um, also which are um, really popular options and for family meals, really easy to assemble. So tray bake is a great idea because it's basically chucking everything that you have um, on, uh, on a tray and putting that in the oven. So, it's, um, it's great because the entire meal is cooked in one dish, so just like less washing up as well. So this example shows, for instance, chicken cooked with rainbow vegetables, served with a drizzle, a drizzle of olive oil and freshly squeezed lemon, herbs and seasoning, but it would work well as well with fish or um, uh, if you go vegan with fresh uh, tofu. And you don't need a recipe, actually. You just need to have a look at what's in your um, fridge or your cupboard store and um, just just track everything on there. So another option is the stir fry. It's a good staple and it's another one pan dish uh, cooking experience uh, that includes a really wide range of vegetables. So the example here is a beef and broccoli stir fry with red pepper, baby sweet corn. And you can just add any seasoning that you want. So, for instance, you could just add a bit of uh, ginger or Thai spices or even um, Mediterranean spices would be great as well. And salad is a great option, but not just your boring cucumber, lettuce, tomato salad. So this one is actually really, very really colorful. It's a kale, sweet potato, pecan, pomegranate uh, salad. And you can serve all of those dishes with whole grains, so rice, noodles, wrap, more veggies. Um, you don't need a recipe for any of those, so just pick what you have in the fridge and your store cupboard and get creative and look how colorful they are, they're just great. So the recipes that I have for you this week um, is a popular one pan um, family recipe that is suitable for vegetarian and vegans. So this one is a winner, really. It's um, it's mixed bean chili. So we are using mixed beans, but you can actually substitute for any kind of beans that you want. That's a recipe for two, but you just need to um, double up uh, for family, and it cooks really, really quickly, uh, five to ten minutes. But you could also just uh, prepare that in the slow cooker. 
And uh, the second recipe is the ginger chicken. It's a stir fry. It's with broccoli, mushroom, um, ginger, and garlic. And you can serve that with brown basmati rice or cauliflower rice as well. It's um, really easy. It's ready in 10 minutes. It's a one pan dish. Um, so it's great and tasty and a great alternative actually for you. Chinese takeaway. So the challenge this week, what will you do differently this week to um, move your health forward? We have a few suggestions, so let's have a look. So start with the next few days to plan ahead, and it's all in the planning. The key for success is planning your meals. Um, we discussed that before, I think it was in week two, but we're going to reinforce that as well. So. Um, you can adjust you also your uh, family favorite um, so that they are a bit more balanced. For instance, if you're making a spaghetti bolognese, you might just want to serve it with a side salad or um, do you have courgette noodles instead of your um, traditional spaghetti or even all of it if you wish. The cottage pie could be just topped with mashed cauliflower as a topping um, or mixture of potato and cauliflower. Fish and chips, for instance, you could just increase the serving of peas and salads and smaller portion of uh, chips. So you can come up with your own ideas, but um, try to follow this uh, balanced place concept as much as you can. Get the kids involved and use the meal plan to get you started. So that's the meal plan and that's going to be attached um, to, this, um, to this presentation as well. So you just need to think about what you fancy over the next few days and what you already have in your covers, fill in the gaps, and then just take this list with you shopping. It's not rocket science, but it takes time and practice to get into it, but it will just be a lifesaver as well. So you have my details here if you have any questions. I'm always happy to help. And next week, uh, same place, same time, we'll be covering how to escape the sugar trap. And uh, we also have some delicious sugar-free alternative snacks uh, for you to try. So I hope that you have a balanced, energetic uh, week. Um, and all the resources presented will be uploaded um, under this video. So I'd love to hear your feedback on how your weeks are going and if you are trying uh, any of those uh, ideas that we've just submitted to you over the last four weeks. I hope that you have a great week. See you next week. Bye.